Tobin Fisher, CEO and co-founder of Vantage Robotics. I'm joined here by Joe Vandekirk, our CTO and co-founder, and Charlie Lozner, our VP of Marketing. I just want to start by saying uh, we could be more excited to be part of this event. It's a huge honor. Thank you to the judges. Thank you for TechCrunch to order for organizing this. <clears throat> so we're in the midst of a revolution in aerial video, and it's amazing. Flying cameras let people tell stories, capture adventures, and see the world from an entirely new and unique perspective. And this has captured people's imaginations. And <clears throat> at least according to, uh, to Google here, uh, after a house, car, and a timeshare, the thing people are most interested in buying is a drone. <clears throat> and this has helped to create some multi-billion dollar businesses already. Flying cameras are a massive, massive opportunity. <clears throat> but the business is still in its early days. It kind of reminds me of the PC industry in the 80s. Uh, it's exactly this kind of pioneer that helped start the industry. And he's who a lot of the products today are designed for. Uh, he takes pride in adopting products before, uh, before friends. He's willing to put up with products that are a pain in the ass. And, and today's flying cameras are a pain in the ass. <clears throat> Existing drones are massively cumbersome. This represents state-of-the-art for portability for taking a high-quality flying camera with you. Uh, they're also extremely complicated. Uh, this is the interface for most flying cameras. It's designed for expert users, and it's really intimidating for the average user. Uh, and worst of all, they are dangerous. And I'll warn you, by the way, if anyone here does not like the sight of blood, uh, this is the time to, to look away. Uh, so I was actually cut by a, a drone myself, a very innocuous plastic baited drone. It was a wake-up call for me. And uh, realized what a massive danger these things are. Uh, I've just since then, unfortunately, seen a huge number of injuries. As a matter of fact, there's even actually someone at TechCrunch I talked to on this trip who's been very badly cut by a phantom. Uh, it's a huge industry and needs to change. Uh, we saw a much larger opportunity creating fl flying cameras for someone like Ian here. Ian's got two kids, loves the outdoors, but thinks flying cameras today are too intimidating and dangerous to use. <clears throat> so we put a team together to go after the challenge that combines both world-class user-centered design exper experience from places like Stanford and IDEO, uh, as well as the extremely deep technological experience necessary to innovate in the areas like sensor fusion, <clears throat> electronics, computer vision, aerodynamics, necessary to move forward in this industry and really do create an innovative product. <clears throat> so creating a product that made aerial video massively more accessible uh, was not easy. It took over three years of trial and error, hard work, and also making a number of fundamental patent pending innovations in areas like micro gimbals. We believe this is the, the world's smallest 4K gimbal. It's the heart of our system. Uh, it let us make our product much lighter, but then we had to make much faster motor controllers than anything else in the market. Uh, and then we had to develop a breakaway magnetic architecture in order to make it work, uh, and a host of other really exciting technologies of uh, proprietary shroud design that lets props be safe in high wind. Uh, the result of all of this is Snap. We're actually introducing the uh, new and final design for Snap for the first time right here and now. Uh, Snap enables anyone to take spectacular aerial video. Makes it wildly easier. Uh, we designed Snap to be portable. The best camera is the one you've got with you. And we designed Snap so it could fit in the smallest backpack and you take it with you anywhere. Uh, it's about one-tenth the path weight of competing products with similar video quality. Uh, but the crazy thing is we did this without sacrificing quality. Uh, so it still captures 4K gimbal stabilized video with the highest quality optics and sensors. In addition, Snap is safe. Uh, we designed Snap so that it could be fun to use uh, instead of scary, as most products are. Uh, and again, we did so without sacrificing performance. Snap still works in high wind, goes 30 miles an hour. Uh, we also made Snap smart. And more importantly, we designed Snap to make you feel smart. Uh, so Snap will do auto subject tracking, follow me. Uh, it'll also do auto flight modes we developed with professional directors, uh, as well as a host of things like ground avoidance, auto ground avoidance, auto return to home. Uh, in addition, we designed Snap to be uh, extremely easy to use. 
uh, our favorite interface for using Snap is uh, a smartphone. Uh, our test for developing the smartphone was to actually take Snap out and fly it in Golden Gate Park near Haight-Ashbury in San Francisco and just let any stranger that walked by use it and see what went wrong and keep changing it until it was right. Uh, and if you know the average person walking by in Haight-Ashbury, uh, you know that was a high bar. Uh, but in addition to that, we know people have personal preferences for how they fly. So we also designed Snap to be usable with a two-stick DSR DSM controller as well as for the gamers out there, a Bluetooth game controller. Uh, we also designed Snap to be extensible. Uh, we have modules coming that will let you do things like one hour flight time using the same body uh, that's safe and silent, uh, as well as obstacle avoidance, fast, fast flight speeds, uh, and a host of really cool other modules. Uh, Snap's ready for pre-order today. Cost $895. We've attracted the attention of the best manufacturers over 40 different distributors, including Apple, and some of the best, most exclusive component suppliers, including Umbrella, Sony, and LG. Uh, with that, I uh, know you want to see this thing fly, so we're going to do a quick demo, and then would welcome any questions. You guys can feel free to clap if you like that. This isn't like silent time. Judges, I'm throwing to you. Uh, I'll start seeing as I have the mic. Uh, first off, congrats on your launch. Um, what, a lot of the larger drone manufacturers today are starting to look a lot more at industry, whether it's insurance or farming. Um, are you guys going strictly after the consumer market, or do you have commercial applications down the line that you're thinking about? Our one and only goal is making it easier for people to capture spectacular aerial video. Uh, we think that's relevant for both consumers and commercial applications, although our primary focus is definitely consumer market. So first of all, this is very cool. I, mean, I definitely want one of those, so uh, that's Thank awesome. You. Um, at the same time, there's a lot of moving pieces here. Uh, it sounds like a hard endeavor, there's the hardware, the software, the computer vision, and all those things. Where's your expertise? What part of the process have you decided to not innovate in, and what part is your IP? Uh, that's a great question. We've, you know, we've taken the attitude of innovate as a last resort, although the result has been we've, we've had to innovate in a lot of areas. Uh, so some of the core pieces of IP we have developed are the micro gimbal, uh, the magnetic snap together architecture, the high-performance shrouds uh, and the user interface. Uh, we are working with partners in other areas where we felt like we didn't have key core abilities, so we're working with partners on the computer vision side of things as one example, uh, and have developed a very large network of experts when we don't feel like we have the right expertise in-house. Congrats again, great work, pretty exciting. Thank uh, you. Two questions, one is, could you talk a little bit more about some of the safety features that you've put in place? And then the second question is, you talked a little bit about the extensibility by adding modules, and I was curious as to whether or not you're going to open that up to third parties to develop on top of it. Great questions. Uh, so safety is, as we see it, two primary things. Uh, one is keeping it lightweight, uh, because whenever you have something that is ultimately denser than air, there's the risk that it will fall through that air, and you've got to be prepared for that. Uh, so it had to be really light. Uh, and then secondly, we designed it to break apart on impact. It's kind of like an F1, what an F1 race car does. That distributes the loads on impact uh, and ultimately makes it much less for create much less force on impact, both less likely to break as well as uh, safer if it does hit someone. Uh, and then the last thing is avoiding cuts. Uh, so we developed the prop shrouds. Uh, in order to have good wind performance, the tips of the blades have to move in at least 60 miles an hour. Uh, which means for most drones, if it hits you, uh, it'll likely, it's like, will likely cut you. Uh, if it's you in the eye, it, it's bad. Uh, and so we want to make sure that couldn't happen with Snap. Um, what was your second question? The ability to be able to... Uh, yes, the, the uh, interfaces, yes. yes. Uh, you know, there's a couple of different models we're looking at for that, and we haven't finalized what we're going to do there. Uh, I think Apple's model, the MFI program, is probably a very likely route that we'll go. Uh, ultimately, we're responsible for the user experience. We need to make sure whatever people create is going to be a great experience for customers. Uh, but we do want to open it up to the largest uh, breadth of creativity possible 
and we recognize that drones have captured so many engineers' imagination, we want to tap into that. Could you talk a bit about the margin structure you plan to have here, both at launch and then as you build the company? Great, yes. Uh, so, at launch, our priority is coming out with the best product in the world as quickly as possible. Uh, it will be profitable, uh, but not very profitable, and that's definitely not our goal. There are a number of places where we had the choice between using an off-the-shelf module that was more expensive and developing something ourselves uh, that would be slower but cheaper. We chose more expensive uh, every single point of the way. Uh, longer term, uh, it's designed for much higher margins. It's designed for retail uh, to be able to sell through retail distribution and have at least 50% margins. Uh, and then the add-on components, uh, we think there's the ability to have slightly higher margins. Uh, my question was just how far along are you on the actual manufacturing side of it? Do you have a factory lined up? What's sort of the time to market that you're looking at? Sure, so uh, we're planning on shipping late spring of this year. Uh, we're currently working with a couple of different of the top big name manufacturing partners uh, and evaluating them. We've not made a final decision yet. But we plan to very soon. Uh, the product right now is uh, was uh, generally called the uh, DVT stage uh, in the process. So right now we're finalizing details in the design and about to transition to finalizing details on the production. And, and so you're shipping the end of this spring, but you don't have a factory signed yet? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Good luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Catherine, don't you know someone? Do you you know could someone? give them yes. a card or something <laughs> instead of just being so mean about it. Gosh. Good move. Uh, are you going to try and build a community on top, or it's all going to go to YouTube? Uh, <clears throat> we absolutely want to build a community over the long term. Uh, that's not part of the MVP. Uh, so we think that's, that we actually have uh, a very interesting patented feature that we've developed that lets users create flight paths and then share them. So other users can use those same flight paths for follow me and automatic shots, uh, which I think is a really interesting way the product, a hardware product can have the liveliness of Web 2.0. Uh, and that is coming provision for, but not part of the initial product. All right, cool. You guys good? Good, because we're out of time. Big hand, uh, round of applause. I'm so tired for Vantage you. Robots. You guys are killing it. Um, while we set up with the next company, I'm just going to turn over to you guys. Concerns about this company? I mean, you seem to be worried about the factory situation. Maybe you could help out. Well, I've just seen so many companies that they launch and they're incredibly ambitious about when they're going to be able to ship. Um, and there's inevitably some sort of problem. I certainly hope that that's not the case that they'll experience. But um, my recommendation is always that you basically are ready to hit go on your production line when you actually launch a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo or any sort of pre-orders. Um, just so you can be incredibly safe about, you know, we're going to ship this date and you're actually able to do it. You know what your margins are because you have a factory and you already know what your costs are. It just makes so much easier uh, along the process. But uh, I certainly uh, know that they'll do an amazing job. What about the product, though? Are you, you into that? Um, Are you a so drone enthusiast? You I, look like one. Yeah, so I have a couple drones, actually. I, I meant to. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I actually really like drones. I'm particularly into the mini ones these days. Um, but I think that there's a lot of people trying to create the best drone right now. Um, I mean, last year there were many Kickstarters on drones. I've already talked to a few companies that are launching it this year. I'm just worried about how crowded the space is, but I love the safety features on this one. I think that that's really going to help them in the market. Yeah, it's a big differentiator. What about you guys? Matt, how do you feel? Uh, so I really like the product as, as a user. Um, I'd love to have one. I think $895 uh, is pretty steep um, for broad adoption. When you think of the price of a GoPro, I mean, I think the Initial market for this is, um, uh, you can probably find an initial market beyond that at that price point. I think it's uh, possibly tougher. I don't know. So, very interesting. I actually liked Matt's question a lot because at the end of the day, I think about this as 
future potential to really provide an additional form of entertainment. Yeah. Right. So I, I like that question, the ability to be able to kind of have a very vibrant community. Maybe it's in addition to sharing their flight paths, just sharing things they're really passionate about and being able to incorporate that into the app so that it's easy to be able to share clips or, you know, there's great companies that are kind of like determining the best kind of portion of the clip. And if there was the ability to do that and have it massively shared, I think that would be pretty interesting and probably help drive their growth as well. I agree, because that's a, you know, a big part of GoPro success is not in their hardware. It's in the that's fact right. that there's a huge community there and a, just a massive pool of content. Um, Rob, do you have thoughts? Or you? Well, just quickly, the thing that I would say is I think it's a fantastic product. There's a lot of activity in this space. And ultimately, how they can differentiate themselves against, I'd say, probably 10 or 20 other startups that are doing camera drones will be the key to their success. Cool.